Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode is going to be a hopefully pretty quick episode as we are just going to be talking all of the happenings from my weekend at Gen Con and all the Hero Clicks news and things that we did get to see at Gen Con. This is episode 381. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, you're back somewhere. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Uh, I'm your sexy ranch and co-host, Calder Ness. I don't even know if I said my name in the intro, I, but I'm saying it again. Joining me, like always, is your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, the Billion Clicks Bruce. What is going on, Simeon? Yeah, Simi Simi Coca Puffs here, and he's yeah. here to stay. That's for sure. Uh, let's really hope that does not stick. That's a nickname horror story that I just do not revisit, want revisited. Don't know why I said it in the podcast, other than the patrons, they'll enjoy right. it. Well, fantastic. Uh, Simeon, let's start the show with what made us happy this week. Why don't you give me a quick rundown uh, of your week, my man? Ooh, a quick rundown, he says. Well, let's... Let's paint a picture for you here, listeners. Painting pictures? The leaves are falling. The temperature's dropping. What's that in the distance? This is Halloween. This is Halloween. What's that? This what? is Halloween. This is... Oh, yes. This is Halloween. It's September 20th, and oh boy, it doesn't get more Halloween season than from now to October 31st and beyond because it's my favorite time of the year. It's cool, crisp, refreshing Halloween season. It's all right. Yeah, sure, man. It's uh, September 20th, Calder. It's Halloween September 20th season. September 20th is Halloween. You think that's Halloween? So, yes, uh, as you know, as you all know, Halloween deserves to be at least 40 days out of the year. So it started slightly earlier in the week, but... Uh, it's definitely going to continue to at least October 31st and beyond. Uh, I I suggest at least November 20th to like 15th to 20th, I think is fair. Leave those Halloween decorations up, put them up early, leave them up late. Thanksgiving does not need to be a holiday. I mean, it should just be called like Halloween to the feast Halloween then, to the feast. Yeah, so like the first serious? Halloween is dress up and candy. The second one yeah. is like food and naps. So I, I okay, so I'll agree with you on a quick Halloween tangent here. If you call uh Halloween a harvest festival, you are an idiot. It is Halloween. <laughs> uh Thanksgiving would be more in line with a quote unquote harvest festival because yeah. like that is what Thanksgiving is. That's Mr. like celebrating Harvesting getting souls. It's oh, Jesus guy. Um, it's more so like where you celebrate having a good harvest or a good crop and then you use yeah, the, uh, a good you know. crop of souls. Oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, so for me, Halloween, I would say, not that I'm going to yuck your yum here, but I think Halloween goes until November 10th, in my opinion, because I mean, after that, after, after, uh, the day after November 10th, then it's, then it's just cold. Halloween isn't isn't cold cold, but after November tenth, it's just cold season. You know, it's just it's just real cold outside, and I just start. I just I'm not quite Christmas, but I just think mm. coldness. Not so much. Uh, not so much spooky season. Spooky season uh, is definitely though throughout all of October, and I think it can bleed into this yeah, September. I think, I think that's fine. I think the reason why I have such a distaste for Christmas and people can rag on oh, me for this all I want is because Halloween slash harvesting of souls uh, leaves society quite soulless for the next holiday, which is Christmas. So Christmas well, truly the next, is the, next the soulless is. holiday because, okay. uh, yeah, 
Thanksgiving isn't a real one. That's just a gimme. Oh, okay. That's, so that's the getting, free okay. space on your holiday bingo card. It is a thing that happens, <laughs> but no one's like, oh boy, can't wait for Halloween. Or for, dang it. Dang, you've out. just made fun of Halloween oh. in the world. You don't know where you're at with this whole uh, thing here, buddy. Yeah. You're doing. I've ashamed myself. Yeah, you have. I'll, uh, I'll step back and uh, let Calder say what made him anyway, happy this week. What, what made me happy this week was it was Gen Con. Uh, absolutely. It was a what? ton of fun. I got to pick up a lot of board games. No Spend way. a lot of money. Whoa, whoa. You went on a The thing you did this long, week? This was week-long vacation. It wasn't took the flight? In it was, I, was, I, I wish it was a flight. <laughs> I wish it was a flight. No, instead it was a 15-hour car ride there, and then a 15-hour car ride back in the middle of the night. Got back home at 6 a.m. today, then I slept for four hours. Oh, then I, I woke you up. You flew. You drove. No, I didn't fly. No, we we drove. Holy cow! So, man, we drove. We you drove. took the Phoenix bus. We took wow. the Phoenix bus. I took the Phoenix bus. There was there were seven of us. <laughs> That's took bourbon. the Phoenix train going in. So it was. It was pretty rough. Um, but. I will say what made me the happiest about Gen Con was this entire the entire time we were trying to get into this Ravensburger booth, play two games. So every every time I go to Gen Con, I do the pin hunt. I try to get pins that I like, and then I try to get other pins to trade for the rare pins and the chase pin or ultra rare pin, whatever it's called, um, just because it's fun. I don't really like pins that much. Like I think they're cool, but I like it more so as a uh, scavenger hunt wheel and dealing in the past when it was like trading pins i was like yeah i'm trading feels cool i like I like that wheeling dealing aspect of it in this one every time you got a pin you just got a slip of paper and then eventually you just turned it enough slips of paper to um to get the rest of the pins so it was less so uh wheeling and dealing and more so just buy enough pins and you get more pins which kind of sucks yeah it's um, not as cool as previous years not, but not fun they're, um, they're still trying yeah, yeah, they're, they're still trying, trying. Yeah, yeah it's like they didn't stop the pins. Uh, but anyways, this Ravensburger booth was one of the few booths that you could get pins for free at. Uh, normally, the pins would be on the low end, $5. And then on the normal-ish end, it would be like $10 for a pin. And you're just like, 10 bucks for a pin? That's idiotic. I, I still I still hate the fact that I, I did pay, I think, straight up $10 for a pin one time. Because it was either that or buy the board game or like a book or something it came with it i'm like well i'm not gonna play the game looks like garbage but the pin is cool so i will be buying that well, pin. your game doesn't look fun so i'll just spend half yeah. that amount on this thing that will eventually no, run no, out of uh, it was a, so there was one game where it was like an 80 dollar game and it's oh. like the only way to get our pin is buy the game yeah or the least and now they this could would, do is throw yeah. in a pen and like an extra ink cartridge for it if you're going to pay $80 for their game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So uh, don't even know what you were trying to say with the pen and ink cartridge thing. But anyways, this Ravensburger booth is home to uh, a game called Royal Rumble. So got to play that one. Instantly bought it. Awesome saw that game. one. Pretty fun. You better bring uh, that down uh, this coming Saturday. because I, uh, wanna... I definitely will. We should, so yeah, we should also... film it and we can... Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah, we can do a, a film can, uh... thing of... Yeah, that'd be fun. There's also a another game that was like another like wrestling game, and we'll get into that one later. But anyway, this Ravensburger booth, we we stopped in so long to try to get the pins for American Monsters, the Horrified game, and then the Marvel Villainous game. Those were the two pins I was after from this uh, weekend. Every time we checked the booth, it was like ugh, full of people, full of people, full of people. One time I went up there and I walked up and I was like, oh, it doesn't really look like there's a line. And then someone yelled at me. Hey, line's back here, bucko. And I'm like, what in the world? And sure enough, there was a line on the other side of the aisle. Um, and this dude was like, yeah, the line's over here, man. You got to go to the back. And I was like, okay, I will. Uh, I probably shouldn't have yelled back at him. <laughs> but like, when someone yells at you, it really bothers. You know, I don't yeah, know, you got to match energy. Me, you don't want to be on a different me. wavelength. You so got to match energy gonna, for sure. I wasn't going to like be like, oh. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sir. I didn't mean to cut you in line. I was like, all right, I will. What I wanted to say was, let's go right now, you and me. Um, <laughs> it didn't help that I was dressed as the ultimate lawyer. Lawyer. Yes. Ultimate lawyer. Law, blah, 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 blah. I said it a million times this weekend. Don't the make me lawyer. sue you. I'm going to oh, sue sorry. you. No. Don't make me sue, Plex you. There you go. That's a good yeah. one. 
Uh, my my go to line was I'm gonna gorilla press charges, which I I think is just yeah, it's pretty so good. funny. Uh, anyways, so yeah, ultimate lawyer, big big hit at the convention. Uh, no one knew who I was. No one got that I was like a play on words or anything. There was one guy who said, "Hey, you really uh really brought back good memories from my childhood," and that 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 was nice. That was really nice because the um, ultimate warrior or like. I assume because the ultimate he warrior had a not good experience as a child friend. with lawyers. I would assume ultimate uh, warrior. I would, I would okay. assume that's why. That's good. So, but anyways, good. with the Ravensburger booth, uh, the final day, uh, we were able to get in on the American Horrified Monsters thing to get that pin. And then we were also able to play, uh, sadly, not Marvel Villainous, but Disney Villainous. And we got a different Marvel Villainous. I didn't get the Loki pin. That was for the normal Marvel Villainous. But I did get a Thanos pin, which is cooler but didn't have like the pin bazaar stuff. Either way, we still were able to finally play those games. I also won as Gaston in Disney Villainous. Villainous is a fun game. I would recommend people playing it before they buy it. I'm not a big enough Disney fan to buy the Disney version, and I really hate that Red Skull isn't in the Marvel villain, but we have freaking Madame Mask for whatever reason. Uh, Seems idiotic to me. Side tangent, somebody else was playing the Marvel game while we were there. And it was like, it was a group of these three girls, right? All younger than like 20 something. And it's like, okay, so you can play. The guy was explaining what characters they could play. And it's like, oh, what? I can play Ultron? And I was like, what? What in the world? And I look over and then she goes, oh man, Ultron is my favorite villain. I love him so much. Here, check this out. And she like shows him like this Ultron pin she has. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. A teenage girl's favorite Marvel villain is Ultron? You like Ultron? Like, he's cool. Yeah, Ultron is neat. But, like, I just assume, you know, Loki. No offense, of course. But, like, if you're a female that likes that side, I just, I just assume your I favorite mean, villain to Loki. be fair, it's it's easy but to Ultron? like Ultron as a villain if you're not reading, like, Bendis comics. But Ultron, though? Like, what? who likes Ultron as their favorite? Like, it was just, it was so jarring to see, like... That is and a then, strange. And then her pick, friend yeah. was like, "Yeah, if you go in her room, she's got like a cardboard cutout of Ultron and all this stuff." And I'm like, <laughs> "What? Who? Who likes Ultron what? that much?" I was just like, "So this is like serious? MCU, no strings on me." Uh, yes, yes. I can't that remember. Ultron. I can't it remember would... who did the voice of that. Um, Nokia or whoever. James I don't know, dude. But I was like, I don't know. I I was blown away. Like that. That made me happy in the pure sense of that. People are not what they seem. Some people. Some people, their favorite MCU villain is Ultron, and that's great. Oh, it is James Spader. Okay, yeah. Hilarious. Um, But yeah. Uh, And of course, more from Gen Con made me super happy, but I'm just going to go with that right there because we're going to talk about Gen Con in the news. Ha, fooled you, but before we talk about Gen Con, Simeon's got some financial things to talk about. I promise it's it's more interesting than I make it sound. <laughs> I don't know if it's more interesting, but well, it's definitely it's important. definitely relevant to HeroClix and it's definitely important. Um so we're gonna like skip the politics part of it because uh neither of us are super good at that. Um but it was brought to our attention by some Heroclix guy that I don't remember who. Um, but essentially, and I can link you guys to more information if you so need it. The main gist is that beginning January 1st of 2022, third-party payment processors, such as PayPal, will have to report any income of goods or services exceeding $600 during the calendar year on a form 1099k previously processed only had to be 20 it had to be both um over 20,000 which is a lot for hero clicks during a calendar year or 200 transactions it had to be both of those previously now it only has to hit $600 which $600 realistically for hero clicks is not that hard to hit. Um, that is a single set. If you're buying multiple cases and reselling, that is if you, so yeah, I'll just, I'll just go from like the normal hero click standpoint, uh, in a normal calendar year, if you are a big purchaser, seller, trader kind of thing, 
you're going to want to do more trading and buying because selling, if you hit the $600 point on PayPal goods and services, you are going to have to fill out a form 1099K wherein um, to show like what kind of losses and stuff you had to like pay for the product. You'll have to keep receipts for the product that you purchased, those kind of things. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is an additional like, do you really want to do this one more thing? Uh, I hate filing taxes, but let's just put it this way. Calder, what do you think you sold just as like an offhand idea in 2021? Um, Ooh. Factoring in Ooh. that we have. So just with, okay, here's an, here's an idea. Um, for our patrons, Calder picked up a ton of the convention exclusives. For them to pay for those, of course, since they're our patrons, they trust us, they're probably going to do friends and family. Um, however, if this was a different situation and they were doing uh, what goods and services, right? let's say like, you know, let's say they weren't our patrons, like Calder was just straight up selling them for cost. What do you think that the amount that you spent at Gen Con for convention exclusives was? <sighs> do you think it was over 600? I... Yeah, I think I spent over six hundred dollars on just convention exclusives. So, in one of them, yeah, in one uh, in, in one, one event uh, weekend, yeah. Um, now, granted, it's a big weekend, but to be it fair, is, yeah. uh, a smaller weekend than Worlds. Like Worlds, when I did Worlds in twenty nineteen, uh, I got a Superman Prime from one event. I had multiple pulls from Gravity Feeds, or not Gravity Feeds. Um, multiple pulls from battle royales slash prizing from battle royales. Um, just a lot of different product going through. I don't think I got $600 the weekend of uh, worlds, but I definitely got $600 from worlds. Um, right. And I'd say this year for sure, just like counting wonder woman alone, I probably got $600 coming in from just Wonder Woman, probably more. And I spent, I, I don't know, I spent somewhere close to that on like the cases and stuff like that that I bought. But yeah, it's it's this thing where if you are going to be selling online, because sometimes people just want to buy stuff, it's a lot simpler. You know, maybe they don't keep a lot of figures. I don't keep a lot of backlogs of figures. I keep what I think I will need. I don't keep a lot of old trade fodder if people hit me up and they're like hey you got anything from captain america i don't want to trade that because i already have what i want to keep oh right yeah so i prefer to just buy stuff or trade new stuff this is going to make it really wacky and kind of weird for a while but then the other thing that i think is even more important to this uh for not necessarily like the casual gameplay, but just for hero clicks in general is um, people like right, Jeremiah yeah. Peterson, who makes a ton of hero clicks trays and accessories and stuff like that. Uh, Stan Strakowski, who makes all the custom dice, not all of them, but he makes a ton of really cool Watch, custom yeah. dice. A lot of hero clicks content creators that do bystanders and stuff like that for monetary purposes they do it as like a close to cost kind of thing. Like they don't make a ton of money. You know, they're not like supplementing their, their, well, they are exactly supplementing their income off of this. They are not quitting their jobs and going full time hero clicks content, like products distributor kind of thing. It's just not like a thing. Um, here recently I bought some stuff from a guy who does uh 3d printed bystanders and for 10 of these bystanders it cost me 35 dollars shipped so not a ton of money it's not a ton but if this guy does 10 figures for 20 people throughout an entire year 12 months which is close to like 12 sets he might have to file taxes for this and so it's going to be it's going to be real hard for these guys that do all this extra work for hero clicks that you know they only do on their like side gig to like make a little bit of money but mostly just make hero clicks a little bit more fun a little bit more interesting add some like flavor to people's teams and stuff it's going to be really hard for these people to justify their stuff 
doing their like their their whatever their side hustle thing is it's gonna be really hard to justify that if they have to one be taxed on it and two you know stan's gonna have to like keep track of how much he pays for dice how much he pays to get his dice painted how much he pays on shipping and then like take all of those losses and add it up against what he gets paid and then get taxed on that leftover amount so it's like it's just the exact amount that you were making minus some extra, which just really sucks. That being said, um, there are going to be some alternatives. You'll have to keep your ear to the ground. Like I said, we are not the most, uh, I don't know. We're not the most savvy when it comes to these things. I was only recently uh shown all the stuff that's going to be going on i don't care to read tax law i can barely decipher it so i'm just reading what other people are saying about it to be honest so i might be off a little bit but good thing to keep an eye out january 1st 2022 you know i'm sorry a big seller keep an eye out um try not to get over 600 dollars goods and services unless you are prepared to file taxes on a 1099k i want to apologize to the listener um i said that might be interesting i i did lie um i am <laughs> no heartily sorry for <laughs> having misled you not at all uh, interesting in my opinion. no no <laughs> entirely uh, pretty bad. important though um it is important. for sure anyways uh, because our our hobby does involve a ton of trading buying is, and yeah selling. buying selling trading yeah because of that so it is going to be something that affects a lot of us. Um, and even if it doesn't like, you know, maybe you're not one of the guys that sells a lot. If you're buying from somebody that's going to start being taxed, like the Chad bird of the community who buy oh, sure. entirely way too much product, they're going to have to factor in that tax into what they resell stuff at. So not only are boosters costing more, um, they're going to be taxed on secondary market more. Um, now, this shouldn't affect cool stuff or troll and toad or any of the other online retailers because they already have to pay taxes on these kind of things, but it will affect like the smaller guys. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, like I said, I've got links. I don't have more knowledge. So if you want more knowledge, you will have to ask for links and I will send them to you and then you can read up on it because I, I for sure cannot decipher any more than what I've said. Right on. Well, thank you, Simeon. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that, bud. Uh, pretty yeah, it's big, a huge. real really, happy note to end on. Really, really, really appreciate it, bro. Um, I want to say a couple things about Gen Con, ladies and gents. All right. So Gen Con, obviously, you guys know, it was this weekend. It was kind of what I was sort of here for and doing this weekend. Uh, I do want everyone to know uh that whiz kids had a booth there obviously we're doing gen con exclusives and all that jazz there uh whoa, whoa, we were whoa. able to see convention exclusives no it's not going on another tangent does already. that Let's mean leave. no they're not going to just send it to every hero clicks player for free yes it's going uh, to be exclusive to this convention yep yeah, so believe it or not, a uh, convention exclusive means it's going to be uh, convention exclusive. Uh, the convention, of course, being Gen Con. So it's so weird yep. because it's been this way For years since and years they and years. started doing convention exclusives. There's been con in your yeah. store, but other than that, and that was the thing that happened like five years ago, seven I years mean, ago. It's forever. It's been a long. I want. I want to uh, see it. They did. They again. did a 2017 one because the, been the, the tanks and the oh, that's right. Um, Ghost Rider, not the Venom Ghost Rider. Not important. Like, anyway, is not no, important. Yeah. No. No. Uh, we. <laughs> I will interject some more questions, though. No. No. Of course. But this. This one not mattering so much. Uh, no. I talked to Scott there. Scott's a great guy. He normally Scott does. Porter. Uh, not Scott Porter. Scott Crampton. Um, uh, not Scott Crampton. Say it's Simi, you're gonna have to. What's his name? Diog <laughs> Destino. <laughs> I let's see. I'm gonna get an know. actual good try. 
Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I thought it was Destanio. Um, anyways, he he was like, "Hey man, I'm gonna open up a booster of Empire. Why don't you come over here? You can you know get get a scoop for your channel." And I was really excited about it. Yeah, he, he said, "Hey, come back in a little bit. I'll uh, open up a booster." He pulled a super rare, and so we wanted to like get some pictures of it. Now, Dial H for Hero on Facebook did publish the pictures of this booster at September 16th at 1:35 p.m. All right, and yet. Before anyone else saw the booster, I was literally there in person watching him pull the figures out of the out of the package. And yet, this foolish, foolish man, Hujibibo, uh, who runs the Avengers Fantastic Four Empire Dial and Evidence Thread, does not have us marked down as a source. Even though we were the first ones to post uh, those pictures from that booster. So, don't trust everything you see on the internet, guys. Some people are just bad at it. You know, people aren't perfect. Some people get stuff wrong, and they do the wrong sources. And that's okay. Uh, even though we were the first ones to post it, because I was literally there, we still don't get credit. So once again, Dial H for Hero Clicks, they, they kind of do be robbing us. Uh, but no, the figures look really amazing. Uh, like Rogue is pretty cool. I like that her flight is her entire base. She's not standing on a rock and then also flying. Uh, the Human Torch, you can't super tell in this picture, and I will say it's not the greatest picture I took. But that's an awesome Human Torch sculpt just for a common, especially compared to the last couple Human Torch sculpts we got. And then is the Jean Grey. Venom Rogue, do you know, is Venom Rogue yeah. a rare? Uh, she's a super rare. Okay, super rare. Okay. Yeah, she's a super rare. So the top of the super rares, this is this set has this weird bubbled kind of effect to the, to the background color. It's not like a solid color, yeah. which I'm fine with. It looks more like dynamic for the sculpts. Um, but the top where the card is shown of Venom Rogue, uh, the top looks grayish, so it looks kind of like more rare, like silvery color. Anyhow, you said uh, so, Jean Grey has flowing hair. Got flowing hair. It looks real nice. Yeah. You know me, I hate X-Men. Nice I hate hair. to give her a compliment. Uh, and, you know, also Jubilee's got a pretty action-based sculpt for being an uncommon, so it's pretty good. The only kind of boring sculpt was Anon, Anonymi, Anonome, whatever her name is. The and it's just sort of like, the, you know, the, she's she's holding her tools, I guess. Yeah. So that's neat. But like uh, what else was in like... the, uh, what's it called? The display case was also the team-up cards and the legacy cards we are more than likely getting for the Fantastic Four OP kit set to be in around October uh, of this year. That's the whole Magma thing, Rainbow Surfer, Weird Mr. Fantastic, Weird Human Torch, the Black, Doctor Doom, Cloak stuff, like all that. So it looks like the team-up cards are going to be fantastic four characters from the fast forces of the last of the first fantastic four set that we got in 2020 as well as a couple of different uh figures scattered throughout that set like black panther uh the human torch x23 it looks like we also have spider-man which is pretty cool but the legacy cards are where it's at so we're going to be getting a legacy card for i believe it's veteran fire lord and then i did read his card it's pretty cool so uh basically he has uh, free, once per game, free make an attack using his printed combat values. So with Fire Lord, that's like a 13 for 3, a 14 for 3, since you're not using ranged combat expert. So it is letting you reuse that vet Fire Lord the way that people did use right. him, which is really cool. So he used to be carried up. And then I think the his other trait is like it just gives him power cosmic, which is really sweet. So Okay. Yeah. Once again, if you if you're on the on the lookout, yeah, it's gonna be a thirteen for three. So go try to pick up yourself a vet fire lord for sure on that end of things. There's also going to be the Thanos from Infinity Challenge, which is really cool. Doctor Doom from a set I don't know of. Lockjaw, who I assume is going to be the Lockjaw from Fantastic Forces. Now, Doctor Doom, uh, sorry, first before we get past this Thanos. He has a absolute brick of text for a trait because the Infinity Challenge uh, Thanos is just like invulnerability. Well, he's invulnerability, invulnerability, invulnerability. He's got no tough, dot. Tough, tough, tough. He's got no card. That's it. The Infinity Challenge yeah, Thanos, he's, of course. Um, so yeah, Infinity Challenge Thanos. For those that aren't aware, is 185 points. the The original one is. Um, Notably, he on click three has a 15 attack value for four damage. Oh, yeah, um, baby. Pretty stout reducers, but zero movement ability, zero speed uh, powers, zero attack powers, zero damage powers. He's all about that defense, that high range, and those high attack values. 
also no team ability, which I guess I don't know if they had any yeah. Infinity Challenge, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so he has an absolute brick of text that I assume gives him either some kind of pick of power or gives him like sidestep, running shot, pen blast, like something nuts, right, to make him kind of actually worth 185 points or maybe even they change his point value a little bit. So there's him, the fast for- Fantastic Forces Lockjaw. We have two Doctor Dooms we'll be getting, as well as Airwalker from Hammer of Thor, Redshift from Galactic Guardians, and the- this is what I'm really excited for is Mole Man from Galactic Guardians. So we got some mind control and some friendly monsters, hopefully. Uh, now, of course, that is what he used to do. Legacy card might completely change what he does, like how the legacy card for Cyclops completely changed how he worked. I also told Scott if he ever wanted to uh, drop me a uh, legacy card or Captain America anything for spoilers that we would absolutely do a humongous write up or a really fun video on it. You know, just uh, just had to casually throw that out there. If it was anything Captain America related, I I'd do a big pop for it uh, as well as, of course, Wolverine related in Simeon's case. Like I keep my text pretty short, but if you want me to write that brick a paragraph, that brick a text uh as they do like figure reviews and all that stuff i can i'll easily write it if it's captain america like in no time but anyways yeah we talked about that we kind of talked about when the uh fantastic four thing was going to come out you know we said is excitement for empire and then you know talked a little bit more about just like the community you know i I asked him you know if he had any favorite videos of ours on youtube you know, I asked him like kind of what he thought about the uh, the pitch meetings, and he's like, "No, nah, I think it's good to have a good sense of humor and stuff like that." So he was pretty chill with it. Uh, so yeah, no, Scott was a really great guy. It was good catching up, and it was it was fun. So, real quick for how they were doing the convention exclusives, it was a max of two each per day, and only one master mold. So two of the those I'm gonna from this point on I'm gonna reference Ultimate Warrior, Wonder Woman, and Jumpa, and then the Cosmic Ghost Rider Thanos as the normal ones. And then Master Mold is Master Mold. So the normal ones were all buy two. That was your cap for the day. Master Mold, you only can only buy one, right? So I did that every single day because I'm trying to get, you know, Connellys and stuff for the locals in our area, for all the patrons. I want to give them away on Patreon, you know, just have some really cool prizes for people, you know, sell them at cost. So that way, you know, they weren't, they didn't have the chance to get them. So I want to make sure they get a little something cool from the convention. So yeah, you know, I made sure to do that. And, on the last day, this was, this was crazy. I was thinking I wasn't actually going to hit the amount of Connellys that I needed to give to all our patrons. But on the last day, I got really lucky. Um, I thought they were going to like run out. That opposite was true. Uh, not enough people showed up to the convention, I guess, because they were letting you uh, go home with five of anything on the last day, uh, standard or non-standard. So Master Mold, all that stuff. You could have just been like, all right, I want five. And then to be fair, to the bottom. Uh, to be fair, uh, definitely not said that multiple times tonight. Um, after day one, Master Mold went live on the WizKids oh, eStore that. for 125 plus shipping. So that kind of killed a lot of the secondary market pull that people would have to like buy out all the Master Molds at the convention and try and resell them. I saw several people after it went live trying to sell them for like 150 or 160 or higher. And it was just kind of like, hey, they, they're they on like WizKids actual store for cheaper than this. So Yeah, I, I don't know. It was something like just, in my opinion, a little weird that the same time they had them at the convention, they also sold them on the website. And it was like kind of out of nowhere. And then, then they were only selling Master Mold. It wasn't any of the other ones. It wasn't like a con in your home. You know, like yeah. people paid to get out to the convention, so they get theirs for a little bit cheaper. But since you get the ease of just being able to buy it, you have to pay a little bit more or anything. But it was only Master Mold. It was weird that it was, in my opinion, it was a little strange that it was only Master Mold. And I think with how much they were trying to move them on the last day, that they will definitely have plenty. And they, they now, I don't know if they will do this, but they, cer- they certainly might have them on their website. I don't know. Uh, obviously, they haven't done a ton of stuff like that with convention exclusives, or they've waited until... They're either golden age or have been in rotation for one or two conventions before they sell them on their website. In 2019, they still had stock of like Punisher Van and Supreme Intelligence to the extent where they were selling them for insanely low prices. I think Punisher Van was going for like $14, like $15, maybe 10. Supreme Intelligence was like 12 
because I bought one and then they tossed one in a battle royale and I picked it up as like third choice. I was like third place in the battle royale and picked it up. So I ended up with two. It was pretty insane. Um, not saying that'll happen to Master Mold, but yeah, it is interesting that they dropped it. And man, nothing goes to show that you like really can't please everyone. Then WizKids sending stores a Master Mold for people to win, putting Master Mold at a convention for people to buy, and then listing it on their e store for people to that aren't at the convention to also buy. Because people, like, and granted, I thought the price point was way too high to make it worth it at the convention. I was not willing to pay $100 or anything even near that for it. But anyone that wanted one and was already going to buy one off the secondary market could get one at the convention for $100. So it's like WizKids distributed two stores for people to win, or I guess a lot of stores just sold them for like 30 bucks. Um, then they distributed them at a convention because it was a convention exclusive. People still didn't like it because they were like, you know, it's way too much money. Even though it was way less than secondary market, I'm like, hey, you know, WizKids probably shouldn't charge nearly close to what the secondary market is, especially when they know that's not what they, like, that's not their cost to make or what. Yeah, they do not charge based on the secondary market or meta capability. That's just not how WizKids operates. So if that's your argument, then that's just a bad argument. But then WizKids puts it on their e-store, and so the people that weren't able to go to the convention now have an option, and they still complained because it was $25 more. And it's like, well, you saved money on not having to buy the plane ticket or hotel room or whatever, $125 $125 at that point is an absolute steal. Yeah. True. I mean, I hate to like to like WizKids horn. I really do. Because I truly don't think Master Mold was worth $125 or $100 or anything on that. But at the same point, at no point did I think that was worth complaining about. Because anyone that was willing to buy it at that price point, like, that was a good deal for anyone that was like really like adamant about getting one. That was a really good deal. And there was some people in the community that were saying how like this was going to be extremely rare and it was going to be like, you better buy them up and buy them at like whatever the crazy high secondary market price was because they're only going to be like, you know, whatever. And then WizKids just pops them out and they're like, Hey, convention exclusive. You can come and buy it for a hundred bucks. Or if you don't want to come and buy it, you can buy it for 125 so the people that are at the con get it for cheaper the people that have won it still have a reason to like have it valued the people that um were lucky to buy it at like a game store for way too cheap are extremely lucky to have it for that price and then anyone that was willing to shell out like the secondary market price can go direct to the source at WizKids and get it for 125 it was a win-win situation for everyone, and yet most people that I saw were still complaining. I, I mean, that's that's a hero host community, though. Like, they'll complain yeah. about everything. I'll I complain about just, things. Yeah. You complain about things. Everybody does. We all do it. Um, like exactly, we just complain about like the price. Like a hundred bucks for Master Mold's kind of crazy when you look at like Galactus, who's a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, so like, and I'm just yeah. There's all sorts I don't, of stuff. I understand why that would be the price point um, because it's bad form to send out a winnable figure and then undercut it by like, you know, if they had dropped tri Sentinel been like, Hey, this is a winnable figure. It's exclusive. And then within a month dropped it for like $25. Anyone that like spent time and energy trying to win it would suddenly feel like they were kind of cheated. I get that at the same time, it's absolutely not worth a hundred dollars. That figure is, it's so small. We we did like a size comparison to the Galactus, and it's so small even compared to the Starro that was like, well, the Starro is still up on the WizKids store. Like, granted, it's now Golden Age or Silver Age, but it's like 50, 70, 
to 50 bucks. I don't know. It's, it's less than the 125. Um, it's way less than what they're charging for the master mold. And the only thing master mold comes with that the other ones don't is two bystanders, which I mean, I guess that's cool. I that's guess last, it's cool. Yeah, that's the last Fantastic. I'll say about the, the whole cool. master mold debacle. Um, um yeah, yeah, there's just no pleasing everyone online. That's for sure. That's always been the oh. case. Are we ready to check in and see how wrong we were with our picks on what we thought Ultimate Warrior style was going to look like last week, Simeon? I think so. Because uh, man, were we wrong? <laughs> are we going to cut to? Are we going to cut to uh, audio of what our guesses were? Because I believe I said I wanted a fourteen speed. Yeah, you said like fourteen speed, uh, eleven attack, eighteen defense. Did you say four damage? Three? I don't think you said. You said like three damage. I think you just, I, your high I number think I was said like speed. I'd like a four damage, but I didn't think he'd have it because of that double perplex. Right. Um, oh, because it said he, he could target damage. That's what. It, right. Oh no, it doesn't matter. Well, because, it, well, didn't it doesn't matter because you couldn't. can't do damage anymore. But, but he was, yeah, yeah. But he, he was, was made, made before rules. Right. Yeah. 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 So. We were so first of all, I was wrong in my thought that he was going to start with running to the ring and shake the ropes because I just figured if we were doing it like based on how the order of a match goes and like when he gets to the ring, that's what he does. I was totally wrong. Both dials at his 150 point line. I think you also said he was like more than a did you say he was gonna be like 80 points? Is that what you said he was gonna be at like top dial? You said it was like 85 or 90 points. I don't think you said he was gonna be 100 points, right? Yeah, I think I think I was going 85 90. Um I did not think his top dial would be 100 because I was basing that yeah. off of Macho Man and Macho Man's perplex. And I was like there's no way well, I to be yeah, to be honest, I it. thought there was definitely a way he would be costed more than Macho Man. I was mostly hopeful and also thought that like convention exclusive would bring a little bit of like prime price range where primes are like costed way less. Um, yeah, that's never been the case. Conventions, if anything, are always like costed higher. Like, look at oh, for sure, Ghost Rider, the two by two Ghost yeah. Riders. So uh, I'll get to them in a minute, but nah, he he's a 10, 12, 17, 4 at 100 points, uh, or at 50 points, he is a 10, 11, 18, 3. His dial is pretty interesting. He has one click invulnerability right away. I think we both kind of guessed that he'd only have one click of invul. Yeah. Uh, and then it was Same toughness as... all the way down until Water click nine, nine, nine click dial, uh, where he gets regen on his last click. He only has two clicks of a 10 attack, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then after his four damage top dial, it's always a three damage through the rest of the dial. His rope's power is his three clicks after his top dial and then his two clicks after his uh top dial on his lower dial so he never That's starts with ropes perplex. power double perplex yeah which is rough because strange again, not being able to target damage i mean it does put him at like a 13 attack or a potentially potentially dropping your opponent's defense by two but it's not yeah well he can only target himself uh so That's- yeah, you can up his defense by two. Higher 13 speed attack defense, or yeah. up his speed, up his defense. I think upping his speed doesn't really help you with lightning speed. Um, no. But his attack, of course, and defense are good. On those choices, same thing. Probably an up his attack value when he gets to flurry. Or, of course, if you're clearing defensively, uh, just super mark up that defense, you know. So I am, I'm pretty impressed with this style, though. Like I, I bought a ton of them, you know, and I knew that Almost no one in our Patreon even wanted Ultimate Warrior, which is like such a shame because not gonna lie, after I saw the just the cards for Ghost Rider and Thanos, I like asked everybody, Hey, are we sure we still want these? Like, because in my opinion, like <laughs> they kind of suck. Like they're awful, you know. To be yeah, like, to be honest, like Ultimate Warrior's dial is almost more impressive, at least like special power to point cost and playability. His dial's yeah. infinitely more playable, but um yeah, what's the lowest? Like Thanos is like has like a hundred point line, or they both yeah Thanos and Ghost Rider line? are both one fifty and one hundred. Yeah, uh, but man, and they have very similar stats: the nineteen defense, twelve attack, four damage, top dial. Like they got some five damage mixed in there. Like 
They've got some good stats. They got strong stats. You know, I'm not going to disrespect Thanos and Ghost Rider, but I mean, like, dude, they suck, dog. Like, yeah, Ghost Rider looks cool, but he sucks. He's so bad. I mean, his special defense is uh, ESD impervious. Like, that's it. If those were stop clicks, it's a different story. Um, but they're not. It's just, it's just kind of bad. Like they they suck. Like I I I genuinely thought people were gonna like cancel Ghost Rider and Thanos orders, but I forget that of course people like Frank Castle, people like Ghost Rider, people like Thanos, people like the Punisher, like people like all that stuff. Yeah, and that's so they were gonna buy it anyways. But I'm like, he's so he's that's so bad. Made again, like both of those. Yeah. Um. Th- that was definitely the one people wanted the most. I was bummed with how many I, I ended up having to buy. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. Like, just because they're they're so awful, I was hoping no one would. I thought people were gonna drop them, but yeah. I mean, they're cool. They look cool, but they're just they're just not good. It should you be know? stated the way as well um, for anyone that's lasted this long and is still interested in these convention exclusive talks. Um, these were all made in 2020. Yeah. All their dials, powers, and everything. So as much as I love the joke, like Wonder Woman and Jumpa ignores hindering terrain and it's like oh great thing they ignore hindering terrain i love that joke i make that joke every time i see it um but these characters are point costed uh powers sculpt everything is in the 2020 era prior to the 2021 thing the 2021 revamp so yeah uh that's pretty much all I have to say about that. But like, yeah. So the Wonder Woman and Jumpa does not have Indom shown, right? Nope, they do not have Indom. So I yeah, mean, they, they, they do still don't take pushing Ghost damage. Rider and Thanos because, because of the new rules. Yeah, right. Because that wasn't like that's you know everyone just does not take pushing damage now. So yep. Wonder Woman and Jumpa is actually better than it was intended to be, based solely off of that. Um, the Ultimate Warrior. I don't think any of the changes are different. It's almost like WWE was kind of like a immune, yeah, beautiful was, immune kind of WWE like a precursor to what was going to happen. Truly, yeah, I love it, I love it. I, lo- I really just so dig that he has the mystical keyword. It's so dope. Uh, I just but wish yeah, they no, had given him so slam great. on all of his clicks, or like he only has a three clicks bottom dial. It's so weird. When do I? It is, it is a little strange. Uh, the weird middle bits of slam. He does have a, a quite an odd dial. I will say that for sure. But I like it so much. Like I, I genuinely wish this Friday, um, or not even this Friday, but this Saturday, I wish he was legal already. I want just to play three hundred modern, six ultimate warriors at fifty. That's that's all I want to do. Ultimate warrior with tempo. So you're giving him thirteen, thirteen speed, yeah, thirteen speed grand entrance. Yep. And then lightning speed, another three. So you can. It's kind of yeah. hard to like TK them after they grand entrance. I guess you're only getting 16 it's squares. Difficult. To be only honest, 16 squares. WWE is hilarious because the amount of times I've played somebody and I've gone second while playing WWE and they'll go and park like middle, like middle of like yeah. the yes. board because they don't yes. remember grand entrance. And then I'm just like, oh, okay. Boom, my whole team is here without actions. Cool. Now I'm going to do a bunch of charges and hit you a bunch. It's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, no, I love it. So, yep, can't wait to play Ultimate Warrior. Probably going to film, before I ship out all these figures, I'm probably going to film a uh, six Ultimate Warriors versus 12 Water Urban and Jumpers uh, video. I think that's going to be hilarious. If no one else but me <laughs> thinks that's funny, that's okay. That's all I care about. I think it's great. Um yeah, I think I think that should be super super fun. Uh, I'm excited for it. I just I I really did like these Connellys. I got in the spirit the Ultimate Lawyer cosplay. You know, I bought a terrible wig off Amazon and paid like twenty dollars to get shipped here. By the time I would leave, you know, I got sort of the face paint not really down. I kind of I messed up a little bit here there. Only have done it. I've only done it twice so far. Um, and then. You know, I just just really got into the got into the feel of it. It's glad I got to be the ultimate lawyer. Yeah, glad I got to have fun. It was a great convention, and then it was a good time hanging out with everybody. You know, I do want cool to do booth. quick note on Ghost Rider, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Oh sure, no stop clicks at a hundred points. So like, this is just purely, is it like competitive at all? Uh, for one hundred and fifty points, you get like nineteen defense ESD. 
um, what is it like? Defend ESD and, impervious. Oh, okay. ESD impervious. impervious. That's all it ESD is. ESD yeah. impervious. Uh, he's got pen and stare. He's got some other stuff going on. Not the worst thing at 150 points, but just not competitive. Uh, at 100 points, where you would expect it to be more competitive, it does have running shot pen sai for four damage, but it's just got regular impervious with um, power cosmic. So, and at that point, it's uh, five damage away from being KO'd. No stop clicks, nothing like super crazy. And then Ghost, or not Ghost Rider, uh, the Thanos. Uh, Thanos, the Punisher Thanos, the baby that Frank Castle raises. Um, the 100 point dial for that is Sidestep Pulse Wave, which we all know is no longer amazing. Um, six range, two lightning bolts. Top dial at 150 is Running Shot Pen Cypher 4 with a special prob power. That prob power would be really sweet if it wasn't coupled at the lower dial with sidestep pulse wave. Um, if it was like an actual real solid piece for either cheaper than a hundred points or had like running shot pen Sai 11 for four, maybe, but looking at that hundred points comparatively to emperor gladiator ultimate warrior probably won't be played competitively at 50 either gonna but, try i'm gonna he's, try he's at least got way more playability because you can i mean 50 points is 50 points compared to 100 uh yeah can play two ultimate warriors i definitely think if anyone's gonna see any form of competitive play it's gonna be wonder woman and jumpa i mean 25 points that's a leadership um honestly just for that I don't know if there's much cheaper leadership for Animal out there right now. I don't think there is for Mystical, for sure. So, like, that part is really cool. Uh, as well as she has Incapacitate is free, the range value of four. She has her whole retail. It's just knockback retail, which isn't amazing. Um, but it's okay, you know? And then she's still, like, a 10 for 2 charge Quake, you yeah, know? The and Quake is if for solid. some reason she's only dealt one pen damage or three regular damage she will go to prob on her last click the retail which is, right. is free so you can the retail yeah, is can free retail um i don't know if the knockback is optional but then yeah you can quake yeah she does have to be within eight squares uh of that person to retail she can't retail across the board uh, sadly, so it's if no friendly character has been placed this turn, choose an opposing character in eight squares that dam dealt damage to a friendly character since your last turn. They do have to deal damage. They can't just hate Wonder Woman as well. Um, anyways, place her as such, and Wonder Woman and Jumpa adjacent to that opposing character. And then these Force Blasts at no cost targeting all adjacent opposing characters. So it'll mess with the, you know, what's it called? Positioning a little bit. I will say one thing that's cool. This is the first Hero Clicks figure in a long time that it has been a name and and then another name. So a quote unquote duo style of figure, you know? So oh, it's okay. not just Wonder Woman, and then she just be happens to be riding a kangaroo. Wonder it's Woman Wonder Woman and, and Jumpa. Jumpa. And then real name Diana. Diana and, and Jumpa. Jumpa. So I'm pretty stoked with the idea that we might get this isn't really a duo click like how, you know, Luke Cage and Iron Fist, you know, like when we didn't think of a traditional duo click. At the same time. You know, it is something. So, like, yeah. I do want to see more duo clicks coming back um, because it's been forever. I think it's Kirk and Ahura was probably the last one, you know? And so I would I would like to see. I, I love duo clicks. I think it's fun. I think the mechanic was not quite, quite what it could have been with the whole split no. merge thing. Yeah. But but I did like the switching dials. I, yeah, the Luke Iron Cage, Fist, Luke Iron Cage. Fist one was really cool. The Hawkman, Hawk Girl switching dials. Oh, yeah, Hawkman, I think Hawkman, Hawk Girl. Hawk Girl was really good because if you KO'd them on one dial, you switched to, well, you got switched to a dial and then you couldn't switch again for the rest of the game. So you essentially picked which one was KO'd. I really liked that kind of mechanic when it came to those duo figs. Yeah. Although... Which part of this figure would be Jumpa and which part would be Wonder Woman? Because you'd have to split them. So I, I'm guessing Wonder Woman, because of the team ability, she's probably got the ESD super senses. So the top yeah. half of the dial is like Wonder Woman. And the bottom half is Jumpa. I don't know. Uh, well, no, because Jumpa is the speed power. Kanga kickboxing, you know? 
So yeah. it's more so like a working in tandem type thing. Yeah, that's true. Versus a this is me, then this is you taking over yeah. because obviously they're not so she's much riding. back to back. They're mounted, so it's more yeah, it's yeah. like uh, Lord of the Rings, um, like the Ewan, Colin you know, Ian Moore and Steed yeah, stuff like that. Sure, you know, yeah. So yeah, no, that is that is the convention exclusives. They did, I guess, they put out the starter, the Empire starter set. You know, the whole battlegrounds type thing that was also on display for one of the days but they never opened another booster so wasn't missing a ton but man that uh i just want to double down and say that freaking uh illuminati super scroll sculpt or the x sorry the x-men super scroll sculpt right. is pretty amazing it is awesome uh I was that is gonna be that is pretty be impressed fantastic. with the uh the molten thing i kind of because that is just the switch click thing um, with a different paint job. Yeah. If I just like remove the paint from the thing that I have, is that what's underneath? Like, would he just be clear? I don't think so. I don't know about that uh, one. I'm going to try. Oh, that's right. They did. Sorry. They did open a second booster. Uh, they did pull a black bolt scroll and they pulled uh Hulkling as well as the Quicksilver in the set. Oh, that's uh, right. Jubilee, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think the rest must have been extra. So, like, there, we do get to see, like, Quicksilver. His card, he has charge, moves in a direct path, he gets knocked back. He has, like, a trait faster than the eye can see. Sidestep when he uses charge and hits. After resolutions, roll a d6. Choose one. Action total plus one at the end of the turn. Uh, then you may place him in a square he occupied when given the action. So, that's kind of a cool way to do hypersonic speed without hypersonic speed. So, I'm going to assume hypersonic is still benched from Quicksilver, as well as, uh, how else would I say it? Uh, they're just unbenching shape change for this set for scrolls. Oh, and sorry, right. one more thing. This is actually kind of important. Uh, we got to see the front part of the pack, or the PAC, as some people like to say. P -A -C. And charge, charge and running shot have got quite the upgrade here. So charge, what it used to be is... Power, have speed, the, the move, mellow grade, and then um, close. Yeah, no, it's an upgrade. Uh, well, power, upgrade have speed, move, close, and now it's yeah. Uh, that's true. Um, so it used to be that, and then at close is free, and now it is power, have speed, move, and close is free, or make a close attack, which is awesome. So this makes flash way better. I, I, I saw a comment. Right. Uh, running shot is now the same thing. It's power has to be moved, then range as free, or make a range combat attack or a range attack. Someone was like, said, like, oh man, super rare flash is finally playable. And I'm like, yep, that's what was stopping him from being played. <laughs> I just, I laughed so hard when I saw that yeah. comment. I thought so, that was pretty great. This, so like, let's take an example that is no longer applicable in 300 modern, but is probably the easiest example for somebody that is worried about this because casually this does not matter that much. Um, but let's go with Vulture Prime. So with this new change, originally the 2021 rules change, Vulture Prime could have flurried, uh, could have charged flurried and then charged again with like a single attack. And then because it would have been as like free, that would have been it. It would have been like charge, yeah. flurry, KO something, charge, single attack, and that's it. With this, a character could charge flurry once as like free, and then charge single attack as much as their heart desires. So they can they can continually duel or like so like flash, for instance, could charge attack, close attack, charge, close attack. And like those are his two charges, or he can charge, you know, close as free and like destroy a blocking square or whatever, and then charge and make an attack, which he could have done before. But this is like a more cohesive way of saying it. Uh, yeah. But essentially, characters that can make vanilla attacks or can benefit from being like being able to make a vanilla attack get a big boost to this. So ADW Hawkeye can once again just running shot to his heart's delight. Um, yep. And that's like, that's the big thing. Um, Sadly, so can Vulture now. Uh, yeah. That's the one negative here. Vulture could infinitely 
charge singular characters as long as he KOs characters. So yep. it'd be much more beneficial to give him like the blood axe now than right. uh, uh, the arc arms. Yeah. Not that that's great or anything, um, but it is something to think about and going forwards because these are mechanics that they've been reusing. Um, characters have the abilities to do these kind of things or activate these kind of things. So it is important to notice them and notice the changes and how they kind of work and function in the bigger picture with older figures and potentially newer figures. Because if a new figure comes out and it's like, oh, this kind of works like Hawkeye, and then you can look at Hawkeye's wording and see if they're the same, and if they are, then this is how they work. And it's it's that simple. Um, at least it should be. Not always. Sometimes they are rad stuff. Who knows? And, you know, that's basically Gen Con. I could talk a ton about all sorts of stuff I did at Gen Con, but it wouldn't really be super hero clicks related so we're just going to go ahead and move on uh let's go ahead, jump into community and answer some listener questions there are dozens of us dozens uh we have one pretty solid question here on discord actually with three questions uh two that make sense uh bill goes on to say when you go to an event be it a casual local or major how much of your collection do you bring is it just the teams you plan to use for the main event, or you bring other stuff for possible last-minute build changes, or just for fun games? Uh, Ian, what do you normally bring to, like, you know, casual night, and then, like, let's say, a uh, tournament-style uh, event? For casual night, it depends heavily on what is actually being played. Because, um, like, certain times, the builds will call for multiple teams and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes I'll bring... So, just... Speaking off of this latest Hero Clicks Thursday night, um, I played a multiple man theme team with some Wolverine and the X Men, some giant size X Men, and some of the new multiple mans. And then I added in a Kate Pride. I was hoping to do Marvel Girl, but I didn't pull one. Apparently, I have no Marvel Girl from uh, House of X, which is the only character with Krico and Revival that also has the uh, X-Factor. Yep, that's the one. The X-Factor theme team. Um, but the whole goal was to bring back some Jamie Madrixes with Krakoan Revival and essentially spit out as many figures as possible. So I brought way more figures than needed because that's what I was doing. Uh, sometimes when I'm building like an animal theme team or just like a specific theme team, I'll bring some extra random like swap in kind of figures because I might not have like the exact idea of what I want to do when I get there. So maybe, you know, I swap in like a Minotaur onto my theme team, my animal theme team or whatever, or something like that. So the average casual night, I probably overbuild by two or three figures. Now, when it comes to tournaments, if I am building and I am actually planning on playing a good team, my tournament team is built to the figure. It is not, there's zero extra figures. There's zero figures missing. I have the exact amount of figures pretty planned out. I've probably practiced it at least once or twice. Um, I'm probably down to like the wire and I'm going to like, you know, just play the exact thing that I've been planning on playing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think the only time that isn't the case is like, if I go to world, sometimes I bring every extra, uh, like sideline piece. So 2019 worlds, I brought every, for 2019 worlds, I brought every extra, troublemaker no we didn't have troublemakers yet i brought every extra trouble alert that i had to the 2019 worlds just in case anybody needed one or just in case i decided to change or whatever um didn't end up mattering i didn't actually play uh 2018 worlds i brought some extra id cards and id characters because that was a popular thing i didn't need any of the extra ones but a few people did need to borrow the ones that i brought so that was like a thing, um, which is just like good 
to like be able to have like the extra ones if I've already got them and I'm not using them. I don't mind bringing them just because I know that somebody might end up needing them at the last second and it ends up helping them. So that's probably, yeah, like an extra like 10 characters in my case for high competitive events just on the off chance somebody needs to borrow stuff. Right on. I definitely pack way less most of the time. I know when I first started, people were like, uh, just bring your whole collection every time you come. And and that was easy when my collection was like, you know, a hundred or so hero clicks, you know, right. just in case I, I didn't, you know, think when about I, it. Yeah, you know, when I first started, year or so. I had three sets and then mismatch stuff and it all fit in one yeah. tackle box. And I could just bring my tackle box and build at the venue. See, and like, that's a neat idea <laughs> when you start off and you have like, very nothing. few yeah nothing. nothing yeah basically nothing <laughs> you know three sets um, is nothing to me but really quickly um i was just like you know i should just build a full team because trying to build and get there is normally pretty rushed and bad so hopefully your venue is a good venue and they post uh what they're planning on doing at least i you know a week is good if you can post it like the day after your event like if you do it on a friday probably to post it on a saturday if not uh posting it like that Monday would be good too, five days or so before the event. Just give people uh, enough time to build and figure out what they want to play. And you can just build. I'll just yeah. bring just that team. I, I leave my trouble alerts and makers just in my little box that I take with me places because they're almost always on a team. You know, if it's, if it's a casual night, I won't play them, you know, or I'll just play like the Wonder Twins or something. Well, just you at because least have funny. them. Yeah. I have them. So I'm like, why, why thing, would I like... move them? If you're in a semi-casual, semi-competitive venue, like Calder kind of is, you can always have them, quote-unquote, on your team. And if you're playing against a more competitive player that wants to like have that mechanic active, you can play them. And if you're playing against a newer player that doesn't know what that even is, you just don't insert them. And you don't have to play, quote-unquote, at your best, like at peak performance constantly, you can handicap yourself. And if you're, you know, I don't know. I think if you're a knowledgeable enough care, like player, then you know how to do that without not like losing the fun aspect of the game. It's pretty easy to handicap yourself and not like ruin a different player's night. You're like, I don't know how to play half. I'm full competitive all the time, always. Uh, sure. No, I know exactly what you mean, though. Like, you don't really have to uh, go the full, like, nine no yards every single Pretend time. Pretend you don't know who I am talking about. Pretend. <laughs> Jeez. I All only right. play full competitive full anyways, time. All anyways. Time, always. Anyways. What a, like, so, like, that's what I bring. I pr- pretty much just bring my team. And then I'll bring trade fodder. That's that's one thing I pretty much Ooh. always take. If I haven't traded Especially a lot of this stuff away, I on just bring it. Release and uh, any kind of sealed games. Always bring some trade fodder. Yeah. So for sure, like you know, like I still just have a couple of random super rares, rares, whatever from Rise and Fall that are just going to be toting around with me and see if anyone wants to get rid of them. Because you know, it's a pain in the butt to ship and sell a rare of all things, you know, online. So would prefer just trading that kind of stuff keeping it within my local scene you know if they want it you know it's good to help like your homies out first your locals before you uh ship it and sell it to like other people across the country or around the world so i think that's cool so yeah mostly whenever i go places i just build the team i brought and then the only extra stuff i would have is just like trade fodder like that would really pretty much be it you know or if i got lazy and didn't pack or unpack last week's team then sometimes that will also be joining my team in the box so like yeah that's really about all i bring with my two events and stuff especially and if it's like a tournament tournament event then it's pretty much just going to be that team you know i i don't like last minute swaps i think it's nine times out of ten a bad idea so i just be like you know this is the team i built it there i've uh, there were events last year for states where I was like, I'm going to swap to this, this, and this. And I was like, I shouldn't have even brought that stuff. I should have just 
went with what I had. And that's what I ended up going with anyways, but I shouldn't have even brought it. Uh, Chance asks a question that doesn't matter, so we're going to skip it. Uh, and then James asks uh, a pretty good question here. Uh, he said, are there any animal characters in media that you would like to see clicks, comics or otherwise? Simeon? I'd really like to see like Tippy Toe and Monkey Joe make like a huge return. I'd like to see. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, because we do have, so we've already got Jeff the Land Shark making his first clicks appearance in um, the Empire set, the new Empire set that's coming out. We've seen the sculpt of Deadpool holding Jeff the Land Shark. We've seen the bystander of Jeff the Land Shark. It'd be really cool. I'm assuming it's not in this set, but it'd be really cool if we get a Squirrel Girl or even like a Gwenpool or, you know, just get like all the people that create the bystanders. So um, X-23, Laura Kinney makes uh, Jonathan from Xavier School, but it'd be really cool if we get a new version of the her with Jonathan bystander or just Jonathan as a clicked character. It'd be really cool to be able to play a team of all of like the pet Marvel characters. not Because they're not pet Avengers, but they're like, you know, Jonathan's like an X manned kind of thing he's he's a nice little wolverine that can kind of talk but is kind of stupid and can't kind of talk and then we've got jeff the land shark that is a species that is neither shark nor nor fully land i don't yeah i don't know exactly what the land shark (laughs) species is it looks terrifying it's not quite street sharks but it's almost street sharks like a few thousand years before street sharks become the uh the actual living thing but if they combine all of those like uh fun little marvel side tangent characters um hit monkey of course like hit monkey was a a thing in the deadpool x-force set that is now like a uh, like little cartoon character as well, I believe. Yeah, I really don't care that we're getting a hit monkey cartoon. I like, don't either. Who asked but... for that? Genuinely, <laughs> though, it's pretty fun that we have these like random by or not bystanders because hit monkey was an actual dial. If, uh, uh, it is kind if... of fun that we have these like non characters that have been clicked that could be reclicked yeah. as like different versions. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, what would be really cool, like if there was a way, a way in hell that we could even get Sting, if they gave us uh, his crow or Ooh, yeah. Raven or whatever it was that he used to terrorize no, Eric no. Bischoff. Raven was a completely different character. So, yeah, oh, hilarious. It's definitely hilarious. a take on the crow hilarious. portrayed by Brandon Lee. Uh, but yeah, his baseball bat wielding Bird. character. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that'd be pretty cool. You know, I'd be down for that. Or even a uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Snake. Snake bystander token. I always thought Jake the Snake would be great as, like, the Princess Python dial. Cause she, oh, yeah. She generates a... A little bit tougher, well. but yeah, that'd be good, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, like Jake the Snake would have to be a much better dial, but as yeah. far as if I have to make my own, I will do it kind of, like, dial. And it's not like Jake the Snake is going to go to AEW. So WWE, you are one hundred percent in the clear to monetize Jake the Snake. Uh, he's in your Hall of Fame. You don't really have much of a choice. All right. Well, right on. That is all of our listener questions, and pretty much going to be a close to this show. Nice. And if you're looking for clothes, you should look somewhere other than CoolStuffInc.com. But if you're looking for clicks, you should check them out. They're CoolStuffInc.com, where they've got the coolest and newest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So you should check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do Six uh, people work? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Google, the back some more. Let's attack Jimmy because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.